Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and another episode of my jig and fly tying series, Vice Principles. I'm very, very excited because today I'm going to be showing you my take on an infamous jig pattern, the Mustache Minnow. This is a hyper realistic bait fish jig pattern by Mustache Jigs and Flies, which is based on the Fat Baby Minnow streamer pattern by Fly Fish Food. I have already been out testing these jigs and with complete honesty, with money on the line, I would put this jig against live bait. I'm telling you guys, anything that eats a small minnow will eat this jig. In clear water, an apprehensive fish will swim up to investigate this jig, take a close look at it, and still eat it. And because it's so effective, I will be putting 10 mustache minnows tied up in various color patterns into the box for my 100 jig giveaway. And now without further ado, let's go to the table and start tying. So to get started, we're first going to prepare our jig head, and for that, we're going to need a handful of things. We're going to need some tube heads, and these right here are perfect for this pattern. This is the size two tube head 25 by Gamakatsu in 1 16th ounce. Next, you'll need some flat nose pliers or some type of pliers that have a flat interior surface without those grooves or teeth on the inside. You'll also be needing a lighter or some type of open flame and a simple pair of locking forceps like these right here and just a little thin strip of sandpaper and some Protec powder paint. And right here I have the black color. It doesn't have to be black, but black or smoke are a couple of colors that go really well with just about any color pattern. So the first thing that we're going to do is give our Protec powder paint a little shake just to loosen up that powder and then we're going to open that up. Next we're going to use our flat nose pliers to flatten out the sides of our tube head just in front of the hook's eye. So we'll just line that eye up right down the middle and apply some decent pressure here until we flatten out those sides just a bit. And this right here is about exactly what we're looking for and that will give us a nice flat surface to glue our eyes onto later. Next we just want to clamp down onto the hook with our forceps, just like that. And now we're going to paint our tube head but only the section that is in front of the hook's eye. So now using the flame from my lighter I'm going to heat up the front of our tube head, just this little section that we flattened out. And I'm going to heat that up for about 10 seconds, after which I'm going to dunk only that head section into the powder paint and quickly tap off that excess and then let it cool. And now we have a nice even coat of paint on the front of our tube head. And the reason that we're only painting that section and not the entirety of the tube head is because it creates a slicker surface that the thread has a tougher time gripping onto. And to finish the preparation of our jig head here, I'm just going to take my little strip of sandpaper and I'm going to sand down only the sides of that tube head where it's painted. And all we're doing is roughing up the slick surface on the sides a little bit and that's going to help our super glue and our eyes to adhere better later on. So now I'll just do the other side here a little bit. And we're done. But now our tube head is fully prepared and it's time to pop it into the vise. All right, now we have our fully prepared jig head placed into the vise and we're gonna start by laying down some of Danville's 210 denier flat wax nylon in white color. And before we go further, I should mention that I'll be putting links to this and all of the other materials that we're going to be using in today's pattern in the description of the video. So now I'll just start my thread right here at the base of the tube head and I'm going to form a base layer of thread right down about even with the hook point. Then I'll take my scissors and just trim off that excess. And after trimming that excess, I'm going to work my thread back up the hook shank about an eighth of an inch away from the base of the tube head. And now we're going to tie in our tail, and for that, I'm going to be using this white marabou feather. And to prepare the feather, I'm just going to stroke the barbs up toward the tip of the feather, and I'm going to measure out a tail that is just a little bit longer than our jig head. Once we've measured that out, I'm going to tie that into the top of my hook shank with a few tight wraps right where we stopped our thread. Once that tail has been tied in, I'm going to twist up the butt end of our marabou feather just to get a cleaner cut. And I'm going to slide in my scissors and cut that close to the hook shank. And now I'll just use my fingers to hold that in position nice and straight on top of the hook shank and make a few additional tight wraps to clean up the fuzzy part of the marabou feather. And with our tail tied in nice and straight, I'm going to form a six inch dubbing loop right at the base of the tail. And then I'm going to work my thread up that tube head in front of the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to secure my dubbing loop with my Smain Master Dubbing Twister. 
And now with my thread, I'm going to make a couple of wraps in front of the eye of our hook and then take it right here behind the eye of the hook. And by making those wraps in front of that eye, we have anchored our thread here and that will prevent our wraps around the tube head from sliding back. And now it's time to form the underbody of our jig. And for that, we're going to be using some ice stub by Hairline in UV Pearl. So now I'm going to take a fairly healthy clump of this ice stub and I'm going to stack that by pulling it apart and just lining it up end to end. And I'm just going to repeat that process until it becomes difficult to pull apart. Once we have stacked that up nicely, I'm going to place that into our dubbing loop right down the middle. And now with the ice step in our dubbing loop, we just want to spread those fibers out. So now we're just spreading out these fibers, keeping them in the center of our dubbing loop. And we want to cover about four to five inches of length. Once that has been properly spaced out in our dubbing loop, I'm going to place the dubbing loop over the tip of my finger, and I'm going to give one hard clockwise spin to my Smain Master Dubbing Twister, just to twist that dubbing up in there nicely. Once that has been thoroughly twisted up, I'm just going to take my Velcro dubbing brush here, and I'm just going to work some of those trapped fibers out of that dubbing loop. And now I'm going to move my thread out of the way using my bobbin holder out of frame. And now we are going to wrap our dubbing loop up around the jig head until just before the eye of the hook. And as we make our wraps, we are also going to stroke those eye stub fibers back toward the tail. And after making those wraps up to this point just behind the eye of the hook, we're going to take our thread and we're going to tie off our dubbing loop by going behind a couple of times. And then we'll make three or four wraps right here in front of that dubbing loop. And then we'll take our scissors and we'll snip that dubbing loop close to that tube head. And with that dubbing loop secured, I'm now going to move my thread up in front of the eye. And right here, I'm going to perform a single half hitch to effectively save our work. When you're tying on a tube head like this, the shaft with the little eye on it is your best friend because that thread, it wants to slide down that tube head, but that little shaft serves as a perfect anchor point for us to save our work. And after making that half hitch, I'm just going to bring my thread back right behind that eye. And now I'll use my dubbing brush just to free up any of those trapped fibers of the eye stub and to remove any loose ones. Now we've finished with the tail and the underbody and it's time to finish building our body. And for that, we're going to be using Fly Fish Foods Junior Bruiser Blend. This is a dubbing that comes in a lot of different colors that are perfect for imitating a variety of species of bait fish. So first we're gonna tie in a clump of this Cali 420 on the top of the jig. So I'm just gonna take a nice healthy clump here and I'm going to stack that up the same way that I did with my ice dub. Once that has been stacked up nice and evenly, I'm going to tie this into the top of the jig with about 30% of it behind the eye and 70% in front. So I'll just split that evenly right over that eye. And then I'll make one loose capture wrap here just to secure that down. And then I'll make one more tight wrap in the same spot. And now I'm going to inspect on both sides and I want this dubbing to cover up the top half of that tube head. And once we have that in the right place, I'm going to flip this over and we're going to tie in our belly color. And for the belly, we're going to tie in an equal amount of the Junior Bruiser Blend in cream color. So I'm going to take my clump here and I'm just going to stack that the same way we did before. And once that has been lined up nicely, just like before, we're going to tie that in with 30% of our dubbing behind the eye and 70% in front. And now I'm going to inspect both sides and make sure that our new clump of dubbing covers up the bottom half of that tube head and meets that Cali 420 right in the middle. After making sure that we have it lined up properly, I'm now going to fan out the dubbing 
on both the top and bottom sections, making sure that it's evenly distributed. And after fanning out those fibers on both the top and the bottom and spreading them evenly, I'm now going to use my fingers and I'm going to push this top section back, splitting that eye of the hook. And I'm just going to make sure I have an even amount on both sides. And after making sure it's lined up and even on both sides, I'm just going to make a couple of wraps right over the front of that dubbing. And now I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom side. All right, with that first layer of dubbing tied in, we are now going to move our thread up in front of the eye. And right here we are going to tie in a second layer of dubbing, but this one's going to be just a little bit different. I'm going to start with another clump of the Cali 420, but this time it's about 50% less material. And just like before, we're going to stack up those fibers to line up the ends. And once that has been lined up, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim off about a third of those fibers. So now I've trimmed off about a third of that length and I'm going to tie this in right in front of that eye. And I'm going to tie this in with about 30% of it behind my thread and 70% in front. And now I'll just inspect to make sure that dubbing is covering up the top half of our jig head. And now I'll flip this over and we'll do the exact same thing on the bottom side, but this time we're going to be using some Junior Bruiser Blend in Butter Belly color. So I'll take an equivalent amount here and stack that up. And once that has been lined up, we'll trim off about a third of that. And then we'll tie this in here on our bottom side. And we'll line that up to make sure it's covering the bottom half of our tube head. Once that is lined up, we're going to fan out our top section here, get those fibers nice and spread out evenly. But unlike our first round of dubbing, I'm not going to spread out the fibers with our butter belly color because I want to keep that in a straight line and keep it on the bottom of our pattern. So now I'll go ahead and fold back this top section, splitting that evenly around the eye. Then once that is in position, I will go ahead and tie a couple of wraps just over the end of that material. And then we'll flip this over and we'll fold back our butter belly here. We'll just line that up right down the middle and then go over the end of that material with just a couple of wraps. And now I'll take my whip finish tool and perform a three turn whip finish. Now we can go ahead and trim off our thread. And now I'm going to color in that exposed white thread in the front, and I'm going to be coloring the top in with a black permanent marker and the bottom with an orange permanent marker. And I'm also going to color some of that butter belly right at the front with some orange. And using my fingers, I'm just going to kind of fade that into those fibers. And now I'm going to go once over everything with my comb just to remove any of those loose fibers. And now I'm going to glue on our eyes and for that I'm going to be using some Gorilla Micro Precise Super Glue and some Hairline 3D Holographic Eyes in gold color. So on each side I'll just place a small drop of glue right on the side of the tube head. And then we'll just place on our eye. All right, the eyes are now glued in place and it's time to build up that head. And for that, we're going to be using this Solar Res UV resin in thick hard formula. And for the head with this pattern, I don't like to be excessive. I'm gonna use as little as possible just to cover up the entirety of that head with a nice smooth surface. So I'll start here with just a single drop on top of the head. 
and a single drop here on the bottom. And then I'm just going to use my bodkin tool here to spread that out and just fill the gap between the eyes. And the thick, hard formula is a little bit challenging to work with, but the positive side of that is because it is so thick and doesn't want to move, you have plenty of time to work with it. Once we have effectively filled the gaps between our eyes, I'm just going to hit that with my UV torch. And I'm going to keep that on that resin for about 10 to 15 seconds. And now after checking to make sure that resin has become hard and is not tacky or sticky, we are now going to add a couple of thick drops on either side of the head. And then we'll use our bodkin tool and we'll just spread that resin all the way around the head evenly. After spreading that evenly, I'm just going to use my rotary function just to encourage that resin to level out around that head evenly. And once everything looks nice and perfectly even, I'm going to hit that again with my UV torch on all sides. And now I'll just check my resin again to make sure that it's fully cured and not tacky. All right, that is looking pretty good but we've got one more step here to finish up. I have here a glass of warm water and I just tossed this in the microwave for one minute. And what we're going to do now is remove our jig from the vise and we're going to submerge it in that hot water for about 10 seconds. And the reason that we're doing this is because this jig has a lot of fibrous nylon materials in it like that ice dub and the flash within that bruiser blend. And those materials carry some memory and that memory can cause some of those flashy nylon materials to stick out and become unruly and we don't want that. So by submerging this jig here in the hot water, we are effectively eliminating that memory from those nylon materials. And after we take this out of the water, we'll just stroke everything back into the desired shape and we'll leave it to dry. And when it dries out in that desired shape, it will reform new memory that keeps our pattern in the shape that we want. All right, this is why I have gathered you here today. Check this jig out when it gets wet. It looks unbelievable. We've got that super realistic teardrop minnow profile, those hyper realistic eyes. We have a realistic color pattern and that eye stub is popping through, making it look like those little veins and capillaries and internal organs that you would expect in a real life minnow. I mean, this thing looks alive. It is absolutely beautiful. All right, now in the original mustache minnow tutorial by Mustache Jigs and Flies, I saw some concern in the comments section that presenting the jig like this might be a little bit misleading. When this jig is submerged in water, it does not retain this shape. That marabou tail, it behaves like the marabou tail on any other jig you've seen. Those barbs will fan out and they will flow in the water. Even when this thing is not moving, it will still have some movement and they pulse when you do apply some movement to the jig. And that is by design. It is not intended to hold this shape, but it does look really cool like this. <laughs> But just so no one feels misled, we are going to pop this into my mini testing tank and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like underwater. Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch my video. And as a reminder, if you're interested in winning a hundred of my hand tied jigs, all you have to do is subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you get notified when the giveaway goes live. Tie up some mustache minnows and let's go catch a bunch of fish and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.